So you've seen Ambilight kits for TVs before. Sorry. No, stop leaving. Listen, give me one minute and five seconds of your time. Check this out. That is good. <laughs> that is good. That's got to be the best I've seen any camera system perform by a million miles. Look at that. Oh, wow. Now watch what happens when I turn it off. Let's go. Thanks to Govi for sponsoring today's video and for sending me their new matter enabled Govi TV Backlight 3 Lite. As with any technology, there are advantages and disadvantages to this product, and we're going to talk about both today, unlike some YouTubers. I've literally just finished watching a video from another guy, as usual, telling everybody, Eh, the product's so great, without once mentioning any of the pitfalls. It does my head in, and I think. I think I'm going to start calling these people out by name, kind of like the Emperor did to Darth Vader. I am a Jedi, like my father before me. It's, uh, it's good that you use the term Jedi Knight, because uh, he never actually attained the rank of Master. Uh, hey, he didn't need to know that, did he? What are you telling that for? Bit of Star Wars humour there. Always, um, always a turn on for the ladies. <laughs> Because this is a Meta-enabled device, it works with Amazon Alexa, Google Home, Apple HomeKit, and Home Assistant for simple functionality such as on-off control, solid colors, and brightness. But the thing that sets Govi apart from its competition is their DreamView technology, which allows Govi lights around your room to be synchronized to the image on the screen too. And for me personally, this is one of the best things about this setup. Inside the box is a strip light powered by USB-C, an upgraded camera that is way posher looking than their previous T1, a control box which, unlike the T1, is now entirely USB-C, a power supply relevant to your country, and a USB-C cable and some fixings. They've moved to a weighted design for the camera mount instead of 3M tape that they were using previously, which is good for two reasons. One, it now fits onto ultra-thin TVs, and two, and more importantly, 3M tape is evil. When humanity's reign is over, and all that's left is the cockroach uprising, the only reminder that we once existed will be all the objects still stuck to our walls with 3M tape. It doesn't ever come off. I'm using a combination of Bluetech and Sellotape, like the super professional that I am. Plugging the strip into the box is the final step, and then mounting the camera and plugging that in too. The three buttons on the control box allow you to power it on and off, rotate through solid colors, or set it to music sync mode. In case you want to have a disco in your house. It's ironic, really, because the sorts of people that like to have discos in their house are the sorts of people that don't have any friends to come to their discos in their house. That's why Tom Cruise cloned himself. I don't know, it's kind of like we, we almost finish each other's sentences, kind of. Well, I mean, I don't, I don't think we've ever finished each, each other's, other's sentences. sentences. <laughs> <laughs> and this thing basically set itself up. 
It's a simple case of hitting a plus button in the app, and the strip is discovered, and you're taken through a wizard to confirm which way you've mounted the strips, and to calibrate the camera to your environment using these futuristic orange foam pads. Thanks, Bing AI Image Generator, for giving me Marty McFly off wish. I'm a little bit worried about him. I'm very happy. You can then decide whether or not to give it your Wi-Fi details so that you can connect it to either Amazon Alexa, Google Home, Home Assistant, or Apple HomeKit. That's it, job done. The question is, is it any good? Um, so I figured this time I wouldn't be the one to tell you. I decided, and I needed to tell you a quick story first, I gave my father-in-law um, the original GoV iteration of this product years ago, and he loved it. He thought it was great. But when I gave him an LG OLED TV worth three grand as part of another video, he was like, I, I don't want to stick anything to it. He kind of felt uncomfortable about the idea, and he abandoned the product and kind of forgot about it. So when I came around to his house and stuck this thing to his telly, I thought I would ask him a very specific question during testing, and I just kind of sprung this on him so I could get a genuine reaction. And here's what he had to say. Would you keep this on the TV, given the choice? <laughs> That's his fun creep across your face. Well, I just, like you, I just, I mean, the other one was good, but you didn't get the gradient as much as this. No. Um, what astounds me, I suppose, on this one is that, I suppose I've always been a bit, because you gave me the telly, and it was like three grams of it, you didn't really want to put anything on it. Um, um, don't want to ruin it, I suppose. But when you see, well, when you switch it off, it's almost like you're disappointed. Isn't it? Yeah, yeah. Again, I've got a 75 inch telly, how can you be disappointed? <laughs> it's almost like you've made it a 100 or 120 inch telly. Yeah, it really does extend it, doesn't it? It's obviously all in your head, but it, it really does make a huge difference to. I think it, it also um, it frames the picture. So it's a keeper then, I mean. <laughs> yeah. oh, how lovely. And I told him before I left the house, listen, I've stuck some sellotape kind of on the vents of the TV. You're going to want to move that thing down when you get the chance. And he said, well, you don't need to worry about that because I'm going to use the 3M tape. I'm going to stick this thing to the TV permanently. And I don't think you can get much more of an honest appraisal than that. It's the kind of honesty someone needs to give to Axel Rose. I love Guns N' Roses. Don't don't give me crap in the comments, okay? I love Guns N' Roses, but come on, that's funny. Uh, that is funny. <laughs> it's worth noting that compared to the GoV T1, there is a new chip making it 20% faster, a new camera with fisheye correction, which makes the color selection more accurate too, blank screen detection, which shuts it off after a period of inactivity, a new LED strip, which as well as being 30% brighter, also includes additional white temperature LEDs for better color reproduction and matter support. So what's wrong with it? It's the next section of the video. <laughs> These lead-ins are not working. There's no one there. I work alone. <laughs> So there are full-blown HDMI sync boxes which you plug in via HDMI cable and these things are mind-blowingly good. They're 100% color accurate uh, and they react incredibly fast to changes in the picture because they are cabled up. If you're really looking for it, you'll see the occasional moment where the Govi equipment reacts a split second after the color has shifted. Now the color accuracy has improved dramatically since I last checked out a Govi Ambulite because I could only find one scene in all the hours of testing I did yesterday where it picked the wrong color. If you calibrate the Govi lights to be the correct color temperature for your room by moving the slider until the white on your walls matches the white on your telly, then the accuracy is absolutely gobsmacking. <laughs> oh wow! I got knocked in the comments twice for doing that joke People saying, oh, enough of the sexism against Jada Pinkett Smith. Stop white knighting for the worst person on earth. I'll save you, multimillionaire. 
You can't say that! Now I have to say, that one scene that I found over hours of testing where it picked the wrong colour, and the kind of millisecond delay in changing colours that happens from time to time are tiny issues, and I only noticed them because I'm looking for them. That's my job. But it does beg the question, why not just buy a HDMI sync box instead? And the answer to that is simple. A HDMI sync box relies on a HDMI input to then look at the colour and then send it out to your TV, which is all well and good unless you're actually trying to watch what's on your TV. If you're trying to watch the TV itself, there's no HDMI output from your TV to plug into a HDMI sync box. Therefore, you're reliant on a Fire Stick or an Nvidia Shield or something else to feed the picture into the box and then into your telly. This is the main reason that people buy these camera-based systems instead of HDMI sync boxes. And this is the best of the best so far of camera-based systems. This is why you would buy this product. Aside from that, this system is way cheaper than a HDMI sync box, and more importantly, will never become obsolete. The other issue with HDMI sync boxes is that Every time the technology changes, like a new iteration of HDR comes along, the box becomes obsolete because it doesn't know how to handle that signal. Or if it does handle the signal, it doesn't actually transfer to the TV in the way the signal was initially intended. It's another reason that if you can stand to have a camera on top of your TV, because some people don't like that, then this is actually a better option. Now previously, I would have always gone the HDMI sync box route, because the colour accuracy from Govi's previous iterations was only about 90% accurate, in my opinion. But now that it's closer to 99.9%, .9%, brighter than ever, matter enabled, and has dream view to sync to other lights around the room, this is actually the better choice, because it works with Vive TV too. As usual, if you're interested in buying this thing, it's in the description. I hope you've enjoyed today's video. If you have, it's because of these incredible people. These are my patrons from Patreon, and without them, I'd still be working in a call center. If you want to be one of those incredible people, you can do that at either Patreon or buy me a one-off beer at PayPal, and either way, I will genuinely love you forever. These are my Facebooks and my TikToks and my Instagrams and my threads and my social medias. And I just I get it wrong every week. Either way, come and hang out there, Eric, and be best friends. See you next time. Basically, I do this every week, and every week there is more technology coming out of my face hole, and hopefully, hopefully, they're, they're not words. <laughs>